What's up with this $800 plus 1,000 watt monoblock? Let's find out. When you hear the name JL Audio, you equate that to expensive and quality. No doubt, the XD1000 slash 1 V2 is no exception to this rule at $830. You check the link in the video description, I'll link you to Crutchfield. They usually have it a little bit cheaper. I actually think JL Audio is pretty smart in not battling this race to zero. You can see the quality here with this covered panel, which is aluminum, and this covers up the controls on this XD1000 slash 1V2. Let's look at some of the other features. It does have power, ground, and remote, and I really like the way these terminals work. Also has inputs and outputs, RCA, and a remote level control, which by the way is not included, sold separately for the low, low price of $55. This is not a Mickey Mouse program! On the other side, we have mono subwoofer output. There are two different terminals there, so you can hook up a dual voice coil subwoofer or multiple subwoofers. Here on the top, as I mentioned, are the controls. Very simple. We have the turn on selection, for remote offset or signal, input voltage low or high, infrasonic filter off or 30 hertz, low pass filter and mode is off 12 dB, 24 dB, and we also have the gain control as well, and the frequency selection for the low pass control. As for dimensions, the amplifier is 14.8 inches for the long side, 7.1 for the width, two inches for the height, millimeter equivalents are there as well, as for ratings, it's rated at 12.5 and 14.4 volts, 600, 800, 1000 at 14.4, 500, 650, and 800 at 12.5. The amp is rated at 2 ohms only. It is not rated to go even 1.5 ohms, which matches up some of the JL Audio subwoofers. So 2 ohms minimum for this one, which is kind of odd in today's world. Now let's fire up the good old SMD to more engineering amplifier dyno and test the true power output of this amplifier. If you've not seen these tests before, on the left, RMS power output in watts. In the middle of the ohm load, on the right, the voltage of the dyno. We'll also have the remote display so we can calculate efficiency. This here's my favorite part. Now, 8 ohms, the amplifier is not rated 8 ohms, uh, nor are many of the car audio amps. But if you guys know about impedance rise, it is important to see how these amps do at higher ohm loads. Certified test first to 1% distortion. We get 389 watts at 14.53 volts. Uncertified test takes us to the clipping point. Let's see what we get. Get closer to that 400. 397, 14.46. Then we'll try the pulse test, the dynamic, sending a 40 hertz pulse tone into the amplifier. These tests are all so close. 394, 14.56. The efficiency at eight ohms is good, but not superb. 77%, which is about normal for a class D amp. Now let's try four ohms mono. It's rated 600 watts at 14.4. If you have a single two ohm dual voice coil subwoofer wired in series, that gives you four ohm. If you have two four ohm dual voice coil subwoofers wired in series parallel, also gives you four ohms. So let's see how close we get to that 600 watts that it's rated, certified test first and 1% distortion, and we get 685. Shazam! Now it's not blown you out of the water with the power output, however, it did its rated power at less voltage than specified, so that always makes us smile. Uncertified up to clipping, we cross over that 700 watt threshold, 717 right at 14 volts. Let's try dynamic. See how this amp does dynamically. The XD series amps do have an unregulated power supply, un unlike the HD series, which are regulated. Here we can see dynamic 715 at 14.1. Efficiency 83%, so a little bit better at four ohms. Now two ohms is rated 1,000 watts, 14.4. If you use a single four ohm dual voice coil subwoofer wired in parallel, or if you use two two ohm dual voice coil subwoofers wired in series parallel, that will give you the two ohm load. Certified test first to 1% distortion. Yes, 1,082. 
Again, not blowing the ratings out of the water, but the voltage was considerably less, around 13.8, so this amp does its rated power. Uncertified up to clipping. Again, voltage is dropping well below 14. We're getting 1,203 watts at 14.6. Dynamic test here, sending the 40 hertz tone. We're getting over 1,200 watts, 1,231, 14.34. Now what about the efficiency? 78% at two ohms, pulling 100 amps of current. As I stated earlier, the amp is not rated under two ohms. We're gonna try the 1.6 ohm mono test that the amp dyno has and see what it does here. Here you go, certified test first. And 1221 at 13.86 volts. So it did run this test without going into protect or anything like that. And as you guys know, these resistive load tests are much more demanding than speakers because the test stays the same, the ohm load doesn't change, whereas the speaker will fluctuate. Uncertified 1,338 watts. What about dynamic? We're closing, closing in on 1,500. We got 1,427, 14.61. How about that efficiency at 1.6? We measured 78%. Not too bad for 1.6 ohms for this amp. Results are here. You pretty much just saw all the different tests. If you stick around to the very end, I will try one ohm to see what it does. Now, what about what's inside? These JL Audio amps are unique. In other words, they're designed in-house by JL Audio. These are not amps you will find by any other manufacturer. And that's kind of like the Kicker, Rockford, JL, a couple other the high-end uh, brands that do not, you know, kind of do the repackaging that some of the other manufacturers do. So let's take off the bottom. Here we can see the internals. See the typical class D layout. See the input board there on the front. We see the chokes on the left there for the output as well as the rail capacitors. Now what's interesting here you'll notice is the capacitors are very small. And I talked about this before. Some of the engineers prefer using lots of small capacitors other than a few of the larger capacitors. They, they say there's advantages to using the smaller ones. I'll let you guys comment below if you're engineers why they would do this. As far as the filtering for the power supply, 35 volt, 820 microfarad, have some on both sides. And then for the rails, it incorporates 15, 220 microfarad, 1000 volt capacitors. And overall, you can see the look here. Now let's talk about the pros and the cons, things I like and the things I think could be better, at least things to be aware of. First off, quality and reliability is up there. JL Audio bespoke design, it is unique. Has dual speaker connections for dual subwoofers or multiple voice coils. The terminals, I really like the way they operate. They clamp down on bare wire very nicely. Line level outputs as well as input flexibility. What about the things could be better? It is expensive. The base remote is extra on an $800 1,000 watt amp. Use a standard RCA jacks, not the Tiffany style, which hold the wires better. Non-variable subsonic filter is either off or 30 hertz. The two ohms minimum limits you to the subwoofer choice that you have as well, so that can be a problem. So overall, this amp, yes, is expensive. Yes, it will be reliable. And yes, it did its rated power. It sounded great. I did not do subwoofer test for this particular video. But yes, it pushed the subwoofers fine. Again, these amplifiers are expensive, but you have to remember, you have to pay for quality sometimes, and if you don't wanna buy over and over again the cheap stuff or worry about it catching on fire, you buy something that costs a little more. That's just how it is. So thanks again to my buddy Brooks for letting me borrow this amp to do this test. Thank you guys, as always, for watching the video, smashing that like button, and leave me a comment below. Till next time, know where Big D is, testing more amps, and I'm out of here. JLXD1000 V2, one ohm dynamic burst at 40 hertz. It's not rated under two ohms. Let's see if it goes into protect or what happens. Here we go, fire in the hole. It made a horrible buzzing sound, that's why I stopped it. <laughs> All right, let's try this again. Here we go.
All right, it looks like the orange light comes on on the amp, so it's doing some kind of a protect thing. I'll show you a video of that so you can see it. See the protect light here, one ohm dynamic. Looks like it's still working, but it definitely goes into protect.